know a place with lots to do and be the forward where you are. We'll cook up some fun, adventure, fantasy, some history and mystery, the magic. It's easy. I love to go there. Come and go there now. Wow! Gumbo Island. Gumbo Island. Gumbo Island. Hi, I'm Britt Henderson. Getting my tap shoes for dance lessons. I'm ready this time. I've been practicing. This Gumbo Island map of Louisiana can transport us to places where people work hard to do things well. Look. We could go to Baton Rouge for music. And one more place famous for an artist. Looks like we're about to go to St. Francisville in West Feliciana Parish. Now when I say one, two, three, you say Gumbo Island. Ready? One, two, three, Gumbo Island. Let's check our adventure journal. You're in St. Francisville, Louisiana. The house before you is very old. It is known as the Oakley House. A great artist once worked here. Come on, let's go. Welcome to Audubon State Commemorative Area, a part of the former Oakley Cotton Plantation, which was owned by James and Lucretia Perry, with the house being built around 1800. In 1821, John James Audubon, the wildlife artist, came and spent a brief time here. He would stay for three months and 21 days, and during that time, he either painted or conceived 32 of his famous bird paintings. Let's go look at some of them. Drawing a bird. See? I am attempting to draw the most exact picture of this bird ever attempted. Is that why you're using the dead bird? Yes. And nothing looks more real than the actual bird. It's this way I can get very close to it to see and paint the tiniest detail. You sleep here too? Yes. <laughs> I teach art and French and even a little dancing to those who live here. I'm John James Audubon. And I am Britt Henderson. Please tell me more about your art, Monsieur Audubon. What is there to tell? I try to do as well as I possibly can. You see, first, I position the birds to make them look as if they are in motion. No other wildlife artist of my time does that. Then I draw the picture first in pencil. Then I use ink. Make the lines permanent and fill in the tiniest detail. Then I paint, making the colors as close to real as I possibly can. Come, let me show you some of my finished work. How did you get to be so good at drawing? Hard work. And when people told me my art was too different, I knew inside it was good. I never gave up trying to make it the best it could be. In my day, you always kept your kitchen apart from the house. Here you are cooking with fire. <laughs> and if that fire gets out of hand, you don't want the whole house to burn down.
Oh, the wonderful smell of baked bread that comes from here. In that oven, bricks are heated with fire. They hold enough heat to bake the bread. Are you sure all of it from this plantation has slaves? Yes. Most plantations in Louisiana did. Those who worked here labored in the cotton fields and some prided themselves in the fine furniture they made here. That beautiful armoire or storage chest you saw at the house is just one of the pieces of furniture made by the slaves here. The descendants of the Oakley slaves, their grandchildren and great-grandchildren are now free. Many still live in the hills of the Feliciana Parish. Here's one place I search for new subjects. Louisiana is a stopover place for millions of birds flying south for the winter. It is warm here and uh, there's plenty for them to eat. I've recorded hundreds of kinds of birds in these woods. Journal has an interesting note about your work. It says you had a hard time getting any of your pictures published or printed. Experts of the time branded your pictures too dramatic. Well, sometimes I have drawn a snake or two harassing my birds. <laughs> Just one of the pictures from your book, Birds of America, sold for $2 each. And now each is worth $2 million. Yes, that book finally brought me fame and some money. Well, I must be going now. And you, I want to send you to see how hard work and practice still can pay off. This time, art is for your ears. This time, the challenge of the music. conductor's job to make sure everyone is playing together and to listen for mistakes. When he hears a mistake, he might stop us and ask just that section of the orchestra to practice it until everyone gets it right. One, ready, go, one. One, two, go. Three, four, two, three, go. I try to make sure I'm doing my very best by practicing a lot of home. Do you like to practice? Well, to tell you the truth, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'd rather be watching TV or something, but I practice anyway. It's important to play a little bit every day. That way you do it enough, you can perform without having to think about it too much. Do I make a mistake? Oh yes. After all, that's how you learn something new is to try until you get it right. <laughs> Junior Youth Orchestra, would you like to watch the older group play? Sure. Hi, Mary. Who's your friend? This is Britt Henderson. Britt, this is Mr. Bergman. Hi, Britt. Hi. 
Would, would it be all right if we watch your group? Sure. Let's sit right here. Now, an orchestra has four families of instruments, and if you listen to the descriptions of the families, I'm sure that you'll know what they have in common. Now, a large part of the orchestra is made up of string instruments. Now, string players, if you would please stand up and show them where you are. And if you would please uh, sound something, strings, that'd be great. Here we go. And. Good. Now, we come to the violin, which is the very smallest string instrument the viola, the cello, and then our very largest string instrument, which is the double bass. Thank you, strings. Next, we have the percussion family. And percussion instruments are anything that can be shaken, struck, or rolled. Percussionists, if you would play something, please. Ready? Eh. on to the woodwind instruments. Woodwinds, if you would stand, please. Now, woodwind instruments produce the sound by vibrating the air column within the instrument. And the flute does it by blowing across the opening of the mouthpiece. And then the other woodwind instruments produce their sound by vibrating their reed, such as the bassoon, the clarinet, and the oboe. And finally, we have the brass family of the orchestra. Brass, if you would stand, please. And if you would play. Brass instruments produce their sound by vibrating the air within the instrument. And they do this by buzzing their lips in a mouthpiece. Brock, if you would demonstrate this, please, and watch his lips vibrating. <laughs> Thanks, Brock. Percussion instruments, too. Hope you enjoyed our Gumball Island adventure. Write down what you thought was interesting in your Gumball Island journal and <laughs> practice. Gumbo.